So ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's a great pleasure for me to be here with uh, Joe Smith or Gypsy Joe Smith or Joe Buckner Smith as he's sometimes known and uh, uh, really pleased to be here with you today. So you had your first fight, I think it was something like you were six or something, weren't you? Yeah, I was about six, seven yeah. um, years of age. It's a job remembering exactly, but I was, yeah. I was definitely in that gap of six or seven years of age. Yeah, and so what is that experience like, actually? You know, what do you get called out of the house to suddenly have a, have a fight? How, how does it work? Well, in my case, it was a caravan. Um, mm. um, as I previously yes, said, of uh, yeah, and uh, yeah. I was an English Roman Gypsy, yeah. and we had settlement um, between Hounslow, London Borough of Hounslow, and um, Epsom, just just out, you know, southwest of London. So um, we, we, we had uh, some settlement there, and I had a cousin um, from my mother's side. But um, he, he loved fighting, and, and, and he continued to love fighting. He was a he was a leading heavyweight in the amateur scene, and it's a shame he didn't turn pro. But he was a hell of a fighter. Um, he was a cousin that loved fighting that used to lay it on me, mm -hmm. and um, had about a six year old. And um, I think I probably liked the idea of boxing because I look back at a lot of pictures as a five year old and a four year old, where I'm actually framing up a lot. But the harsh reality is when I got punched on the outer or in the mouth initially. Um, that was the real fight and the realism, and um, I didn't respond initially. And one day I decided um, uh, it was it was a moment. My cousins were out all playing games in the field where we where we had our gypsy site, and um, I wanted to go out there. And my dad said, "Oh yeah, if you go out there, though, you get the same result. You'll be back crying again. You'll get whacked." Not today, I said. Run for the door. Um, my cousin went to throw a right hander, and I did bang. Caught him on the counter. But it wasn't, he just loved fighting so much, it wasn't like he turned the bully. It wasn't like that, you know, he just loved fighting. And um, I just made a recipe for a fight that made a good even match. And we actually continued knuckle fighting and boxing at the same gym for about four years, constantly. But you those mean, those are early fights, though. I mean, you, you weren't somebody that actually really wanted to, to have a fight, were you? Did, did, no, did, no, no, no. It was like a young lad, and suddenly, are you thrown into that? Do you have a choice over it? How is it? Well, I'll tell you what was interesting. I think Saint Saint uh, Saint's got to trigger you off. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm surprised how many times you see other men become fighting men, tough men. How many times they initially? I think even Mike Tyson. I, I saw mm -hmm. one with Richie Crazy or Salsley, who I had, had the pleasure to meet. He initially wasn't a fighter. Mike Tyson initially wasn't a fight. I think he got bullied. Even a little girl beat Mike Tyson up at one stage, I think, during his career. Mm -hmm. But something triggers. When it triggers, we don't quite know. I don't suppose, you know, as babies, a three, four month old, we're not fighters. Mm -hmm. um, we probably are, but we don't know it. But something triggers somewhere in the career. And something triggered that sort of one, six year old. What was different from my background, I'll give you, I'll give you an example. The last fight me and my cousin had, we actually, we actually did spar um, this cousin I had from six to about 10 year old. We did actually spar once when we were like 21 year olds, 22 year olds in a, in a gym in um, Tooton. And, um, but our last actual fight, but we were like 10 year olds and we we're like eight, nine stone respectively. We're big, heavy, lumpy kids. And we were fighting for over half an hour I remember he had a bloody nose and I had a black eye and, and from our background we were actually spectated and applauded and cheered. You know, some of the some of the fella uh, Romanese would take his side and some would take my side. And we're actually um, um what's the word? We we were celebrated, weren't you, really? Well, we, we were yeah. celebrated, but we were yeah. encouraged. Yeah. Encouraged is the word. We were yeah. encouraged to continue the fight. It had a ringside ticket. Mm -hmm. And it was a hell of a fight, and it was just a daylight that stopped it. But I think that's the big thing. I once saw something in the Sun newspaper, mm -hmm. and it was in the front page. It said, Barbaric, two, seven, uh, two ten year old kids mm -hmm. are having a cage fight when they're rolling on the floor. Mm -hmm. And I thought, if you call that barbaric, you should have seen me in the, in the late <laughs> 70s, early 80s. Yeah, well, it's 1979, mm -hmm. 1980 when. You know, we're knocking blood and, and we're actually encouraged and applauded. So, you know, that's the bit that I found different. But with the fighting, it's, it's a difficult thing to explain. It just, mm. just say, triggers it off and away you go. Did, did you enjoy it at any point? Oh, I mean, I've got to confess, I'm, I'm a man of love and peace. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm a sportsman. But when you're in the zone, mm -hmm. 
and um, you're going for it, the adrenaline, it's, it's a hell of a, it, it really is some buzz. I mean, I've got to be honest, it's mm -hmm. yeah, pr probably very, very difficult to, to get its equal. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't like the initiation of it, and I don't like violence, but being involved in a, an encounter probably that is violent, mm -hmm. it's different when you're involved. It's, you know. so, so how many fights did you have, those kind of uh, bare knuckle fights? Oh, me, me and my cousin, used... literally, me and my mm. cousin had hundreds. I mean, literally. We, we, <laughs> really hundreds, hundreds. Literally. Of, yeah. we, 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 you've got to bear this in mind. We were trained three days, I think. I think it was in them days, it was mm. a Monday, Wednesday, uh, Sunday morning. So we had three days in the gym. Mm. So we were sparring with gloves on there because we were such an even match that had to happen. Mm. It was, you know, so we were the same age, same weight, give or take. And um, we, we just come back. So, so the other days we weren't fighting, we, we'd probably be, because we didn't have any school to go to, we'd possibly, good, good, good chance we'd be fighting in the daytime before we spar with the gloves on. So this happened for four years, I mean, I mean literally hundreds of this happened. And, and, and do you, I mean, you get injured, presumably, do, do, do people care, do they say, well, you can't fight today because you've got a black eye, or are you back out there again? Well, not, not, not really, I mean, yeah. I, I remember having a fight, when, when I say, um, I call it my adult, um, knuckle fighting. Yes. And um, all my adult knuckle fights. Well, when did you say you were an adult? What, what, what kind of age group well, were you then? Well, when I say adult knuckle, yeah. well, this is, yeah, this is, I was 15, yeah. 16, 17, 18, 19, respectively. Yes. My opponents were ranged between 18 and 28. So, really? you know, the 18 is still a sort of young adult. That happened when I was mm -hmm. 15. But all, the 16 year old fight was like a 28 year old. The 17 year old fight was like a 25 year old. The 18 year old fight was like a 30 year olds, so, so they were all fully yes. grown, strong men. Um, how, how, did, how did you compensate for that? Because obviously if they're older and you're younger, how, is there a special technique that you used or, or how, how did you manage to compete against older people? I, I just, I, to be honest with you, like um, on, on one fight, when I was 15, um, it just sort of went back a little bit to what you, you said, did you care about cuts? So I, I had stitches in my mouth. Mm -hmm from a liberty that was taken the night before. But unusually, I had a plaster on my mouth, yeah? And my dad had taken me to the fight and he didn't know I had stitches in my mouth. And he, he, he said he would have let my brother fight, who was like 20 year old. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I didn't care about four or five stitches in the mouth. We just went on, we done it because it was something I was used to. Um, how did I adapt to beating? I didn't see myself at 16 and he's 26. I didn't see that. I just see the man in front of me, and um, I just had to win the fight. There's, there's so, no, no way I'm going to lose if I could help it. Did Did you have like um, heroes at all? I mean, did you look at people like you know the Roy Shaws and Lenny McLean, Lenny McLean, I should say, um, those kind of guys, uh, Cliff Fields, Lou Yates. Did Did you look up to any of those kind of people? Well, I looked up to them later. Bloke we looked up to was Gypsy Johnny Franklin. Um, the king of the gypsies of his time, without doubt, Johnny, uh, British champion, number five in the world, and a fantastic man. So he was our sort of hero. Mm -hmm. He's the man we would look look up to. And, well, uh, what, what about the replicate, if you like? Yeah, uh, the people like you know Bartley Gorman. Was was that something much earlier? Did, did you know much about him or anything? Well, Bartley first. But Bartley Gorman, God bless him. Um, I I hadn't met that gentleman, but he first come to the prominence in my mind when. Um, a good friend of mine, Chin the Ref, Bobby Franklin. Bobby Franklin had Chin the Ref famously, mm -hmm. and um, Bartley had challenged uh, Bobby to a fight on a ship for, with, with um, some gold coins, and it hit all the national papers. So and then um, he had become known to me was Bartley Gorman. But I mean, um, he, he sadly died young. He looked a tough, strong man. Yeah. I haven't seen any footage, but no doubt his reputation speaks for itself. I remember uh, filming him, he, he really stood out at. Um Reg Cray's funeral, and uh, he was there, and he looked he's this huge, tough guy, you know, fancy, yeah, he, fantastic. he just looked a tough man, didn't he? He did, yeah, uh, absolutely. absolutely. So you, you, you kept on fighting, you were like, you know, 15, up, up to what, what age were you doing the, the bare knuckle? Well, it was just as, the, as they come in, um, it, what had changed, I've become a golf professional, I was, yes. because I had parallels, I always had parallels of sports from, from mm. when I was a young age, my golf and boxing always run a parallel, and... Um, it transpired that uh, I think I had enough knuckle fights um, as a 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 year old to build up a good enough reputation where people said, oh, 
he's not going to be an easy day's work. Mm -hmm. Leave him alone. I like to consider myself as a polite bloke. Yes, I made mistakes. I was a young youngster, but generally, I think I was a polite bloke. And couple that with being able to look after yourself a little bit. I didn't have too many fights because I've now changed fashion a bit. I've now gone on to become a golf pro um, for 25 years. Yeah, so um, so I didn't have too many fights thereafter. So the, there was a point um, in your life where I think you got uh, there was an issue at a, a golf club or something like that, and you you got into kind of uh, crime. Uh, kind of what level were you at doing that? As a criminal. Yeah, I mean, did, did uh, what, what the sort of things that you were involved with? Well, as I say, I, I, I'd like to think um, I've said before, there's no such thing as um, as, uh, as good crime, mm -hmm. um, but I call it good old-fashioned crime because it was it was um, it was it was never taken to people directly. Mm -hmm. So the typical piece of crime for me would be um, committing a crime on a on a factory or mm -hmm. something like that. You know, of course. I now know that people own factories and they run businesses and um, I have my own business now and I now know that it's not the right thing to do but I didn't see it that way. I was a bit naive and that was my criminal background, sort of activities if you like. Did you regret that kind of scenario? Uh, I mean because at one point didn't, didn't you, um, you, you, you were almost arrested and, and that kind of turned it round for you? Didn't oh yeah, I've been arrested. Yeah. I mean I've had a couple of little bits on remand, I yeah. even went innocently. That's um, right, later on, didn't uh, you? Later yeah, on, yeah. in prison, on remand. And um, it was only for a couple of weeks, but I looked, um, it was in Scottish law, it looked like um, if I didn't get bail on the third time of asking, mm -hmm. I was going to get a six month lay down. Well, six months is a long time when you haven't done something. Yes. Um, and, and if the, the case went wrong, that would have been three or four years, but I was 100% innocent. Yes. And my wife says to me, um, but you're innocent. Mm -hmm. And um, what you're going to do? I said, tell you what, I was on the phone uh, and on this remand yeah. wing in Scotland, in, in Edinburgh prison, yeah. and I said, tell you what, I'm going to do, love. I said, I'm going to press it. Do you remember? I don't know if you, anybody of you has been had it, had it, as kids. We have a little jumping jack toy. You'd yeah. stick it, and it, it'd spring That's off right. and go yeah, yeah. jump up. We called them yeah. jumping jacks. Yeah. I said, what I'm going to do? I'm going to become a jumping jack, go through the skylight, get downwind from Edinburgh, and sail all the way back on my wings to London. Right, right. What so, do you think so, I'm going to do? I mean, I can't. Yeah, but you're innocent. I said, yeah, but how about the times when I weren't? Yeah. It swings true. and roundabouts. I'm a, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a fighting man. I'm a man. You, you take your knocks and bruises. You don't always punch on the nose. You get punched on the nose. That's Same right. in the criminality. It's a cat and mouse game. So, yeah. so how long were you in for? It was only a couple of weeks, but it was looking yeah. like an iffy case. The yeah. press got behind it and everything. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I mean, what, what was it like actually day to day in, in prison being like? I mean, especially if you've never done it before, you know, I mean, because a lot of people obviously never been to prison, they don't, they don't know what goes on. How do you, what happens? Well, you, you know, we just watched our P's and Q's. It was me and it was my, my brother that was involved with the criminal activity and his two mates, my, yeah. my mates as well. Yeah. We were just sharing a flat. So there were four of us um, were all charged with the same yeah. crime and we were on remand and it was fine. At one bloke, tried it on a little bit and um, I really wasn't in the mood. Yeah. I put him in his place and I think we got respect on our wing because it looked as though we were going off the remand wing into the... Into mm -hmm. the um, is, is that really uh, important to, to get that kind of respect when you go in somewhere like that, you know, so you don't get any hassle and stuff? Well, we, yeah, we didn't, to be honest with you, the, the, the big, biggest, strongest couple of guys I met on the wing um, were really nice fellas um, yeah. uh, in the exercise yard over the duration of just a couple of weeks. And I was a big powerlifting champion, a Polish bloke, I remember. But he was a nice bloke, and, and the most dangerous criminal in there was a really nice bloke. We got on well together. That's so awesome. um, it was just one of the other blokes trying to impress, and right. um, I had to put him in his place. Um, well, I just felt like, it just, I didn't feel like an actor, it was just a natural reaction. Yeah. And we got a bit of respect in there, and I met, um, I don't know if he's listening, um, a nice fellow, his name is from the Davy family, right. um, surname Davy, Scottish Romany Travellers, mm -hmm. and um, he actually said to me, my cousin, is there anything you need? I mean, that's, we felt, me and my brother felt ever indebted to that bloke, um, so if you're out there, thanks to the Davy family, they attempted to look after us with clothing and money, but of course, our stuff was on its way in transit. But um, that was still a very nice offer. So, um, yeah, so we had, we had friends up there, cousins, without knowing them, if you like. So, fantastic. So, you, you went into the, um, the unlicensed boxing and uh, you teamed up with a guy called Tel Curry, who I knew from many, many years ago, um, who introduced me to a lot of people like uh, Ronnie Knight and, and stuff. No, sadly, no longer with us, is he, Tel? Sadly, Terry. Yeah, it. yeah. So, what was he like, your trainer? Yeah, yeah, Ted. Yeah. Um, how it worked, Tel, Tel um, 
was the uh, fitness manager in, mm -hmm. in the gym in Ephro and uh, I just, just started joining them and then got to get a bit of weight off and whatever. Just I just started joining the gym and I just got fit up and fit out and fit and we had a, a little boxing section in there. And um, yeah, and I got so fit and I thought, well, I, I can't, this is silly, this is, this is ludicrous to be this fit and not box. Because we're doing all these boxer size and mm -hmm. boxing training and we start tapping around sparring but this is ludicrous. I'm training as hard as a Southern Area champion. You know, we were training that much. We loved it. You know, I reduced about three, four stone in weight. I went in there about 20 stone. I'm now about 17, nearly right the way down to shape. And that's where my um, Tell, you know, we just cemented this friendship and Tell become my trainer. He was an ex-boxer. And um, that's where my unlicensed career was was formed at. So you, you, you trained with a lot of uh, interesting people. I see. It was one Stacey Dunn? Was that? that yeah, right? Stacey. I, 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 I um, Stacey was on the unlicensed scene. I think he had the un unlicensed world title. And um, I, I went over to Stacey's gym in Watford. I went over, sparred a few rounds with Stacey, and um, yeah, I got along well with Stacey. All right. Yeah, nice. There's friend. an interesting uh, bit of film on uh, YouTube with uh, Stacey when uh, he was fighting a future opponent of yours, Steve Yorath. Oh, he, uh, yeah, yeah, when I think there was a bit of kicking and shoving going on. Yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. So he was quite a fighter yeah. uh, and all that. So did you ever do anything with, with the Piles uh, in that sort of unlicensed scene, the Joe Pyle? Uh, jo Joey Pyle. Yeah. Um, old Joe was a close friend of a cousin of mine, Jimmy Stockings. Yeah. And I knew, I knew old Joe. My, my dad used to drink with old Joe. So yeah. go way back. Uh, mm -hmm. Me and Joe Pyle Jr. are in the same gym at Epsom and Yule. Right. And my dad and Joe Pyle Sr. would drink together a bit. Mm -hmm. And then later life, um, my cousin Jim become really close friends, and his brother. Did you ever fight on, on any of his shows? No, no, didn't fight on Joe's shows. But me and Joey promoted. We, we took a group of fighters from England to fight in Ireland. Mm -hmm. So me, me and Joe done that together, oh, and then brilliant. we promoted a show together in Ephro. Yeah, it was a really good trip in, um, in in Ireland. We had so much fun. Yeah, and, they're, they're um, a great crowd of people. Yeah, we we won five four, and mm -hmm. I'll tell you what was interesting. I said to Joe. <laughs> We got out there and we had a great welcome from the Irish. We were just over the border at Donegal mm -hmm. and um, we had a great, great reception. And I said, I got to the Irish Guinness, so I went down mm -hmm. and another one and another one. Oh, and I was just going down like silk here. Yeah. Anyway, long story short, I've had about 10 of these things and we're meant to go to the way in. So Joe, Joe Paul Jr. says, I'll leave Joe. He said, let him, let him, let him, let him, so I'll go and have a rest for an hour. So mm -hmm. I think he lets me sleep for about four hours or whatever. So we missed the way in. Mm -hmm. So we then go to the venue mm -hmm. and um, we win a fight, so a pint of Guinness arrives in, mm. in the corner, this is in the corner. So, mm. so we then win another fight, another pint of Guinness. So I, I haven't put two and two together here, I'm, mm. I'm not coming up with it, Like I, I don't know what's going on. But it transpires where it's a 50-50 Protestant and Catholic town, right? right? Mm. And we're England, so it just transpired, all the Protestant supporters, every time we won a fight, Mm -hmm. A point to be one five four, so a further five points to get this in the corner. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> uh, great nose, nice people. 